My name is Rick Renner and today I'm standing in freezing temperatures in Moscow next to a very old ancient fortress. Actually, this is a wall that goes around a section of Moscow which is called Kitai Gorod. This massive wall is so huge and it was built between 1535 and 1538 at the orders of Ivan the Terrible's mother. She wasn't just his mother, she was his regent. She was his guardian until he became an adult and he could rule Russia by himself. And Ivan the Terrible, by the way, was quite terrible. But this wall was simply enormous. Its walls are about half as tall as the Kremlin walls, but they're about twice as thick. In fact, they are so thick that a carriage with horses could run all along the top of these walls around all of Kitai Gorod. You can see that it has slits. These slits along the wall were designed for cannons and muskets. It had 14 huge towers. And the purpose of this wall was to protect the people who lived on the inside to make sure that invaders could not get inside. And if necessary, these walls would keep the people on the inside trapped. It would keep them inside. That was the purpose of a stronghold, to keep people inside and to keep those on the outside on the outside. That was the purpose of a stronghold in the ancient world. It's very interesting because in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 in our Bibles, the Apostle Paul tells us we have weapons that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Just like this wall, people have strongholds in their lives. Strongholds that keep them trapped as prisoners to their own vain imaginations, the devil trapping them with lying emotions. And those walls are so thick that often it keeps the people who could help them on the outside. Wow, there's so much to know about a stronghold. What is a stronghold? How can you identify a stronghold in your life? And how can you be set free? How can you pull down strongholds in your life? That is what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Thank you for joining me for today's program. Today, we're going to keep looking at what is a stronghold, and specifically today, we're going to see what's the difference between a logical stronghold and an illogical stronghold. Both of them are real strongholds, but there are logical strongholds and there are illogical strongholds. Which one is worse? Actually, they both have the same effect and God wants you to be free of logical strongholds and illogical strongholds. That's what we're going to deal with today. And I'm offering you my series, which is called Pulling Down Strongholds. My friends, the only stronghold that ought to be in your head is the Lordship of Jesus and the truth of the Bible. You need to have a stronghold, but it needs to be the right stronghold. The voice of Jesus, the Word of God in your head. If anything else is ruling your mind, your emotions, your destiny, your self-image, God calls on you to pull it down. And that's why I want you to have this series called Pulling Down Strongholds. Five parts. You need to hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it. Or maybe give it to someone else that is struggling in their mind in their emotions or in their self-image, God has freedom for them and for you. And this comes with our great study guide. The study guide really reinforces what you see and what you hear. It has all the Greek words, all the points, all the principles. And by the way, if you go to our website, you'll see we have so many study guides which are perfect to share with a friend for your personal study or for an entire Bible study group or a Bible school. They are just amazing. It's really a lot of literature and information and a revelation that will undergird your spiritual life. Go to our website and look at that right now. Also, we're offering you my book, which is called Dress to Kill. The back of the book says, A Classic on Spiritual Warfare. That's not what I say. That's what other people say about this book. It's nearly 500 pages about spiritual warfare in spiritual armor, page after page after page. Just today, when I came in here to prepare to film this program, I picked up this book and I said to my producer, what an amazing book. 
and it even comes with pictures. And the pictures are so wonderful because they show you what this weaponry really looks like. This book is such a treasure and you need it. Or maybe you know somebody else that's going through a rough time. This would really help them get through that rough time. I believe every Christian ought to have a copy of this in their personal in-home library. Anyway, order your copy right now. Just go online or call us right now to place your order. And for those who become partners, I want to say thank you. Remember the Great Commission, Matthew 28, verse 19. Jesus said, go into all the world and teach all nations. Do you know what the Greek says? Go and keep going. Don't just do it once. Be faithful. Be consistent. You need to be involved in this for the rest of your life. Either go or empower those who go. And when you become a partner with our ministry, you become a partner with us. You empower us to take the teaching of the Bible to people who are longing for the teaching of the Bible. And when you become a partner, when you go with us into all the world with the gospel and with the teaching of the Bible, we immediately send you a package of books as our way of bringing you into our partner family. And a partner is anyone who regularly gives into our ministry. But today I want us to return to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're looking at pulling down strongholds. So reach for your Bible. We always use the Bible in this program. And turn, if you would, to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And very quickly, we're going to move to verse 5. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, Paul is talking about pulling down strongholds. And he says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In the last program, we looked at weapons. And again, that's why you need to have a copy of my book called Dress to Kill. This deals with the weapons of our warfare. We have weaponry, my friends. And when we have weaponry, we are in a superior position. And Paul says, for the weapons of our warfare. The word warfare is a Greek word, strateia. This is very important. It is the word for a well-planned attack. It's derived from a Greek word which depicts strategic warfare. So God wants to give you a strategic plan to attack those lies of the enemy. It includes the line of attack, the methods to be used in an attack, and the route chosen to carry out a debilitating assault. God doesn't just give you weapons. He wants to give you a divine, Holy Spirit-given strategy on how to assault the lies that have been trying to dominate your life. If your self-image has been hampered, if you think you're defective, if you think you're not gifted, that there's something that you cannot do, that is an enslaving lie. And you need weapons and you need a divinely given strategy to pull it down, to bust it up, to assault it until you walk free of that lie. My friend, God has something for you to do. And if there's anything that's hindering you or blocking you in your mind or in your emotions, that is against the knowledge of God. And God is calling on you to use weapons with a divine strategy to break it up, pull it apart and pull it down. In fact, that's why the rest of the verse says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty. That word mighty is a translation of the Greek word dunamis, wow. The word dunamis pictures explosive power, superhuman power that comes with enormous energy and produces phenomenal energy extraordinary, unparalleled results. This word power, the Greek word dunamis, is the very Greek word to depict the full might of an advancing army, which means the Holy Spirit in you with a divine strategy and with weapons puts you in a superior position. You no longer are hiding from the enemy. You are in a position to assault, to advance. That's what this word power means. And it says mighty through God. In Greek, it says to theo, which means through the instrumentality of God or in partnership with God, which means when you make the decision to charge, when you make the decision to advance against the work of the enemy in your life, God enters into partnership with you. You're not in this by yourself. Now it is you and God together. You and the Holy Ghost together are advancing against the stronghold. And the verse continues to say, this power enables you to pull it down, pulling down, strongholds. And we saw that this word pulling down, the Greek word kathereo, means, listen to this, to take down. So God is calling you to take down any lie that's working in your head or in your emotions. It means to disassemble, if needed, 
bit by bit, piece by piece. Well, if it's been in your mind a long time, it may not quickly come down. You may have to take that thing apart bit by bit, piece by piece. You've got to be committed until you've totally obliterated it. It means to demolish, to destroy, to dismantle. You've got to dismantle it. To throw down, knock down, break up, pull apart, take to pieces until nothing of it is left standing. And in an earlier program, I told you that when I was a young boy, five or six years old, my dad wanted to build a garage and we couldn't afford new bricks. So my dad bought an old house downtown Tulsa and he said, son, we're going to dismantle that house and I'm going to use all those bricks to build my new garage. And he and I went to that location and he handed me a hammer. <laughs> I remember as a five, six year old boy looking at that big house with a little hammer and my dad had a hammer. And I said, Dad, how are we going to dismantle this house? He said, brick by brick, let's get started. And every day and every weekend, we went to that house and we hammered and we hammered and we hammered until finally we had disassembled, we had dismantled, totally cleaned every brick. Nothing was left of that house, but it took persistence and it took commitment. My dad was committed. In the same way, if you're going to walk free, you've got to decide you're going to dismantle any lie that's been working in your head. You've got to disassemble it. You've got to take it down, knock it down, take it to part piece by piece if needed. You've got to be determined that you're not going to finish until that thing is gone and you are completely free. It says that these things are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And we've seen that the word stronghold in Greek is the word ukoroma. This word is so powerful. This word ukoroma was the old Greek word which described a citadel, a castle, or a fortress. It was a place that had tall walls, thick walls. The walls were so tall, people couldn't come over the top. People couldn't break through the walls because they were so thick. So the outsiders were kept on the outside that this same word ukoroma could describe a prison built inside a fortress, a prison that was so dreadful, it was intended to keep those on the inside on the inside so they could never escape. So this word ukoroma here translated as the word stronghold also depicts a place of arrest. If you have a stronghold, you're in a place of arrest. It describes captivity or a place of confinement, detention, it means to be imprisoned or to be incarcerated. If you've got a lie working in your head, you're incarcerated by that lie. It's blocking you. It's holding you in a place of detention. You're not able to move forward in your life. The Bible calls this a stronghold. But when you go to 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, Paul goes on to be more specific. He says, casting down imaginations. Guess what? Casting down is a translation of the Greek word katherio, the same word translated pulling down in verse 4, which means once again, Paul says, you've got to take it down, disassemble it if needed, bit by bit, piece by piece, demolish it, destroy it, dismantle it, throw it down, knock it down, break it up, pull it apart, take it to pieces until nothing is left standing of it. You've got to be very committed that you're going to walk free. And he says you are to disassemble, dismantle, take to pieces imaginations. The word imaginations in Greek is the word logismos. This is very, very important because this is where the attack takes place. It takes place in our imaginations. And the word imaginations in Greek is the word logismos, which is where we get the word logic as in logical thinking, but it was used to denote any thought or reasoning of the mind. Now, at the beginning of today's program, I told you that there are logical strongholds and there are illogical strongholds. What is the difference? A stronghold is anything that incarcerates you. It confines you. It arrests you so that you cannot move forward. Well, a logical stronghold example would be if God tells you to do something. Maybe God's called you into the ministry or God's calling you to school or God has told you to start a new business or to give a gift to a ministry. God has told you to do something 
A logical stronghold says, God, I hear what you're saying, but I cannot do what you're telling me to do. That's not logical. I can't do that. A logical stronghold will arrest you so that you cannot take a step of faith. And logical strongholds are very difficult to deal with because they are logical. Let me tell you, friends, God gave us a brain and he expects us to use it. But if God gives us a word of instruction, that word of instruction overrides our logic. We need to do what God says. And if you can't do what God tells you to do, then you're bound by a logical stronghold. But then there are illogical strongholds. Let me give you several examples. For example, say a skinny person. This has always amazed me, but this happens all the time. Somebody so skinny that you're concerned that they're going to get in trouble physically if they don't start eating. In fact, they're anorexic. They're not eating. They're anorexic. But that person, when they look in the mirror, sees fat. The truth is they're so skinny that their health is in trouble. If they don't start eating, it's going to affect their health. But when they look in the mirror, they see something that does not match reality. They see rolls, they see fat, they see something that doesn't exist. That is illogical, but it is real to that person. That is what that person sees. That is an illogical stronghold. So there are logical strongholds, they make sense and they incarcerate you. There are illogical strongholds. They do not make sense, but they are very real to the person who perceives them. Either way, it's a place of arrest. It has confined you. It has incarcerated you. You're stuck. You can't move. You're behind bars. Now, many years ago, I had a friend who had a goat and he named the goat Babette. And one day the goat disappeared. Oh, he was so heartbroken how he loved that goat. But he lived in a small town in Texas and he got a phone call from the local sheriff. And the local sheriff said, hey, we just saw your goat. He said, really, where's my goat? He said, somebody has tied it up and thrown it in a ditch. You need to come get your goat. Oh, he was so excited. He jumped in the car and drove to the place where the goat was. And he looked down in the ditch and there was his precious goat, Babette. And Babette was wrapped with ropes, and Babette was laying in the bottom of the ditch. He said, oh, Babette. He took his knife, crawled down into the bottom of the ditch, and he cut the ropes off of the legs of the goat. He said, come on, Babette, get up. And the goat just laid there. It just laid there with its legs together as if it was still bound. He said, Babette, stand up. And the goat just laid there and miserably looked at him so pathetically. The goat perceived that it was bound, even though he had just cut the ropes and set it free. The goat thought it was still bound. The goat did not realize it was free till he physically picked it up, parted its legs, and set it back on its feet. Then the goat realized, I'm free. And my friend, I want to tell you, Jesus freed you. You are free. You are free of chemical addictions. You are free of excess weight. You are free of negative thinking. You're free of sickness. You're free of all of it. Jesus did a complete work in the cross. You just have a lie in your head that tells you you're still bound. There's just a lie speaking to you saying, oh, you can't change. You're so bound. You'll never be free. You'll never be what you wish you could be. That's all a lie. That is a lie. And through this teaching, and through the Word of God, our job is to pick you up, part your legs, put you on your feet so you realize Jesus Christ has made you free. You're just living behind a lie. It's a lie. Walk free. The ropes have been cut free. You can be anything that God tells you you can be. You can do anything <clears throat> that God tells you you can do. My friend, anything that tells you otherwise is a lie. It is a lie. And Paul goes on to say in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing. The word every in Greek means every. It is all encompassing. It means everything, nothing excluded. High thing in Greek is really the word which describes a bulwark, 
a barrier or presumption, something that is blocking you. If there's anything blocking you or your step of faith or blocking you from what you know God wants you to be, you're to pull it down. In fact, he goes on to say that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Exalts itself in Greek is a word which means to lift up. It depicts a haughty, arrogant, prideful attitude to wrongfully assert here it is, a haughty attitude, wrongfully exerting itself. Mm. It is a presumption, it is a barrier, it's a bulwark in your mind, and it is against the knowledge of God. What does that mean, against the knowledge of God? Well, the first part of this phrase is the word kata. The word kata in this case carries the idea of something that is dominating, it means to squash, to pull under its control, or to subdue. So we know, first of all, this is something intended to squash you or to dominate you or to pull you under its control. The words, the knowledge of God in Greek really depicts knowledge that finds its origin in God or knowledge that comes from God, knowledge that has its source in God. It depicts what God says versus what the enemy says and when you put this together against the knowledge of God, it is an all-out war against any information, revelation, or knowledge that comes from God. Now, let me give you an example. God says, you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. That is the knowledge that comes from God. The stronghold in your mind says, well, I know that's what the Bible says, but in reality, I'm not healed, and I've been trying to be healed for a long time, and I'll probably never be healed. God says you're healed by the stripes of Jesus, but the stronghold says, no, you are not. It is against the knowledge of God. Or God says you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That is clearly knowledge that comes from God. But your flesh and your mind and the lie in your head says you are unworthy, you're condemned, you're not righteous, you don't feel righteous. It is against the knowledge of God. You see, the stronghold is against what God says about you. And if there's anything that is squashing you, anything taking you down, controlling you, dominating you, and it is contrary to what the Bible says about you, then it does not belong in your head. You need to pull it down, dismantle it, disassemble it, take it apart bit by bit if needed until nothing is left of it. That is a lie that is simply waging war against the knowledge of God, what God says about you. You've got to cast down imaginations cast it down. You've got to become aggressive. And just like I told you, the first part of today's program, when I was a boy, we took that house apart brick by brick. You've got to be committed that if you've got to do it, you're going to take this thing apart brick by brick. You're going to disassemble it, dismantle it until finally it is gone and you become everything that God, God says you are. That's the knowledge of God. And that is the truth about you if you are in Christ. I'm out of time, but I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you. Do you know anyone with a bad self-image or negative thinking that affects the way they see themselves or how they perform around others? Many people are hostages to lying imaginations that keep them from being all they were meant to be. If you are harassed by inward thoughts and your life feels limited because of voices that speak to you, then pulling down strongholds will help you walk free and become the person you dream to be. To defeat the enemy's lies and step into the life God wants you to have, you need to know what is a stronghold? What are signs that a person has a stronghold in his or her life? What weapons pull down a stronghold and remove it forever? Available in digital or physical formats starting at just $10, Pulling Down Strongholds will show you how to cast down the lying imaginations that have controlled your life for too long. In addition to this teaching series, right now you can also purchase the book, Dress to Kill. This comprehensive study teaches you how to put on the full armor of God, and in it, you'll learn the significance of your God-given spiritual weaponry and how to be prepared every day to defeat the enemy. This beautifully bound 500-page book is the definitive Bible study available on spiritual warfare. This powerful book can be yours for just $22. Order today to discover how to have victory in life's battles by renewing your mind and finding your identity in Christ. Don't miss this special offer, Pulling Down Strongholds and Dress to Kill. 
Call now, 1-800-742-5593, or go to renner.org. Call or go online now. My name is Joel Renner, coming to you from Moscow, Russia. And I want to say thank you for being a partner with our ministry. It's because of your financial support that we're able to open churches all over our city. Moscow is a beautiful city and one of the oldest cities in Russia. It is very dynamic and is a very large city that is developing all the time. There are many churches in Moscow, but ours is one of the biggest Protestant churches in the city and was opened in the year 2000. And it is called the Moscow Good News Church. But more recently, we opened a new church location in the southwest region of Moscow. Because of this new location, our Moscow Good News Church can serve people who live on the other side of our city. People there need salvation, healing, restoration, and a place they can call their spiritual home. And the Lord has called us to take the gospel to them. Our partners helped us lay the foundation of the Moscow Good News Church and have helped us open multiple churches in Moscow. But we've been working quite some time to open this new location, and now it's done. We thank God for His help and rejoice at everything the Lord has done and is doing in our lives. Because of the support of our generous partners, we are able to open these new locations in our great city. We all have a part to play, and right now, right from your home, you can help us help others by becoming a partner in this work and supporting our work financially. We invite you to become a partner with us to establish believers in the Word of God and take the gospel all over our city. Please call us or go online to renner.org. Through your generous support, we can continue to make a huge difference in people's lives and around the world. You know, it's amazing. Our telephone has just been ringing and ringing, people calling for prayer because of what they've been hearing in these programs this week. And if you need prayer, you call us too. We're waiting for you right now. Pick up the phone, call us. We're waiting to hear your voice. We want to pray with you for you to be liberated in any area of your mind or your emotions that has been under assault. Jesus has freedom for you. If you can't call, send us an email. And as soon as we hear from you, we're going to put our faith together with you. I promise you that. And I want to remind you that I'm offering you my series right now called Pulling Down Strongholds. Five parts. It comes in multiple formats with our great study guide. And we're also offering you my book called Dress to Kill. You don't have to take it anymore because you're dressed to kill a biblical approach to spiritual warfare and armor. By the way, it's important that you have a biblical approach. What you believe about the devil and your authority over him needs to be based on what the Bible says. Don't have vain imaginations about the devil. You need to know what the Bible says about your victory over him. So I want you to order your book, Dress to Kill, and we'll get it right in the mail to you. But I want to pray for you. Father, I am so thankful that you do not want us to be bound by a logical stronghold or an illogical stronghold. I rebuke both of them in the name of Jesus. And my friend, I'm telling you, you can be anything God tells you to be. You are everything that God says that you are, and anything that tells you otherwise is a lie, and I curse it, and I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and with you, I command on it to fall from your life. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. Wow, this has been so good. I can hardly wait for tomorrow. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. I'll see you tomorrow.